<laughs> what the hell is the Age of Aquarius? Are we in it? Has it started? What does it mean? Why is it such a big deal? Why is everyone talking about it? What came before? What's coming after? Let's go there. Let's go there. Um, if you're one of my followers, welcome. This is the Age of Aquarius video that I referenced this morning on Insight Timer. If you're new and you stumbled across this video, my name is Jackie Mancuso. I am a spiritual coach. I'm an astrologer. I'm just a really fun person to hang out with because I have this practical, positive way of looking at life uh, because life is supposed to be easy. So I was talking astrology this morning and I realized that I need to make an extended video on the age of Aquarius because it's been floated around the spiritual community for decades um, and I have opinions on it. So here you go. Welcome to Jackie in the Raw. I have no notes. I'm just going to start talking about something that I'm passionate about and here we go. What is the age of Aquarius? Are we in it? Has it started yet? When does it start? This astrologer said it started in 2012. This one said 2020. This one said 2032. What the hell even is the age of Aquarius? Ooh, Jackie in the raw. Jackie's swearing today because this is how I speak. Uh, so the age of Aquarius, this is coming up right now because uh, the song. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will rule the stars. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Uh, so a couple years ago, December 2022, I was driving in my truck listening to that song, which means so much to my heart. And um, my astrologer brain said, oh my gosh, when Jupiter aligns with Mars, that happens every two or three years. Mars takes two years to go around. So Mars has his return every two years. Jupiter moves one sign per year. So I was like, oh, quick math. Okay, where's Jupiter now? Where's Mars right now? So I did my little astrology research and I found that Jupiter aligned with Mars on August 13th and 14th, 2024. That's today. Um, and then the, the moon in the seventh house, that's going to depend on where you are in the world because that depends on the house system, which depends on the horizon, which depends on where you are and what time it is and all that stuff. So where I am in Northern Illinois, the moon was in the seventh house overnight, midnight, midnight from August 13th to August 14th. And I took a screenshot of this chart in December of 2022. And I just had it in my heart that like, wow, that is going to be a monumental moment. That is going to be when we walk into another layer of the age of Aquarius. Okay. There is no start date to the age of Aquarius. I truly fully believe that, but I feel like there's layers. There's like an onion, like you, you take one step in and then you learn to adjust and then you take your next step in and then you learn to adjust and you realign to what this new beautiful energy is. The age of Aquarius has been talked about. I mean, that song came out in 1969. I was obviously not alive in the sixties, but everything that I see from it is all peace and love, right? Um, so it's been, the age of Aquarius has been talked about since the hippie era, right? And the hippies were great fucking people. Great people. All they wanted was love and they were made to seem like these crazy wackos so that other people could control us. <laughs> um, what am I even talking about anymore? The age of Aquarius. Aquarius in astrology is the sign of community. It's the sign of collaboration. Aquarius is an air sign, and all air signs have to do with relating to other people, being in relation with other people, your tribe, your community, the people around you, these organizations that you want to be a part of and you want to assist, right? So this upcoming age of Aquarius holds all of those themes. It's about working together in cooperation with people. Aquarius is also related to innovation and invention. So coming up with new things, new ideas. Aquarius's modern ruler is Uranus. That means that once Uranus was discovered as a planet, it then became the ruler of Aquarius because Uranus wasn't discovered until, I can't even tell you, um, the dates don't matter to me. It's something about eight, either the 1980s, <laughs> This year, this a planet before 1800s, maybe. Um, I, yeah, you can look that up if you're curious. But the traditional ruler of Aquarius was Saturn. 
Saturn is about structure and rules and regulations. However, modern ruler, because we live in modern times, we are in the modern expression of Aquarius is Uranus. What was I talking about? Why am I talking about Uranus? Uh, innovation. The age of Aquarius is going to bring a lot of innovation because Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Uranus is that crazy, batshit crazy planet who will bring up the most random shit at the most random time because it's cosmic, because it's the download, because it's otherworldly, because it's way ahead of its time. So this age of Aquarius is bringing all of these things that are just like quantum, right? I was here, now I'm here. Age of Aquarius. Let me go back um, to help this make sense for you. So what is the age of Aquarius? That's the question I'm answering right now. It's a time of bliss, community, working together towards a common goal where everybody has equal play. Everybody has equal power. Everyone is just as important as the next guy. And things are moving forward. Aquarius is also related to the future, right? Your hopes and dreams for the future. So I can only imagine that the age of Aquarius is going to help us call in these things that we've been hoping and dreaming for, maybe even for our whole lives. I feel that the age of Aquarius will help us gain new hopes and dreams that will be easy to, to call in because Aquarius is fast. Uranus energy is fast. It's right there. It's air. It's so speedy. So what is the age of Aquarius? It's uh, the age is a 2000 year chunk. We are coming out of the age of Pisces. The ages move backwards. So it's not going to be for it's backwards. So we're coming out of the age of Pisces. Pisces is water. Think about how much water travel, water exploration has been happening since year zero, right? We'll just use that as like a loose time zone because none of us were alive back then. Um, water exploration, water travel. If you guys have not heard of maritime law, I consider, I, I recommend looking into maritime law and seeing how much of our legal system is using words of the sea it's just a deeper understanding that might help you get through some legal battles if you need <laughs> um yeah literally our law system is set up to be in water there's so much uh i i went down a lot of conspiracy holes for the last four years and there's a lot coming up that i don't know how much i want to talk about because i don't know how much i believe but whatever there's a lot of information out there and if you feel like doing rabbit hole stuff go into maritime law. Um, coming out of the age of Pisces. Pisces is mystical. Jesus, the fish. Jesus, year zero, age of Pisces, start, right? Um, Pisces is represented by the fish. Before the age of Pisces, for 2,000 years before that, we were in the age of Aries, conquering, war, pillaging, Right? Like, I, I'm not a history buff because I don't give a fuck, but like, I just feel Alexander the Great, right? Is that even the person that I'm thinking of? I'm, I'm just feeling all of this like medieval, I'm just gonna kill, and I have my sword, and here's this anger and aggression. It's Aries, it's bro, it's me. Aries is an individual, right? It's me, it's the king, it's this. Age of Pisces, water, Jesus. Age of Aquarius, innovation, technology, advancements, moving forward, community, collaboration, working together. Is this making sense? We're 10 minutes in. <laughs> and I got, what is the age of Aquarius? What else was I asking? Why now? Why now? Why is it kicking up now? Let me take a sip of coffee and think about that one. My experience comes from diving really deep into astrology in 2020. So that's where my knowledge base starts from. Other astrologers might have different opinions because they've been in it longer and they have their own life experience. I started truly deep diving when the world shut down. 
So that's when I started having all of these like, oh wow, we're in the age of Aquarius. Oh wow, this is happening. Oh my god, what's happening today that's making this happen? I'm a very in the moment type person and that's why I don't know anything about history because I wasn't there. I don't care. I'm here right now. In 2020, we had the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that happened on the winter solstice of 2020. So December 21st, 2020, Jupiter and Saturn met in the sky at zero degrees of Aquarius. Jupiter and Saturn meet up every 20 years. So it, while it's not like this life-changing once-in-a-lifetime event, it happens every 20 years. Like, it, it's a big deal. Like, it, it flavors 20 years. So this was in December of 2020. Jupiter expands. Saturn is boundaries and regulations. So every time they meet up, it's going to set up this 20-year uh, feel of what kind of boundaries are going to be regulated, what kind of restrictions are going to be put into place. When Jupiter and Saturn meet up every 20 years, they have a chunk of 200 years where they meet up together in the same element. So prior to 2020, for 200 years, so since the 1800s, <laughs> they were meeting up together in Earth signs. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Every 20 years, they'd have this new, okay, now we're going to have expanded boundaries and regulations in Taurus. Now we're going to have expanded boundaries and regulations in Virgo, then Capricorn, and blah, blah, blah. So what that did is it made the last 200 years feel very heavy and dense. Earth signs are slow. The energy is slow. The energy is practical. The energy is a little stagnant. The energy is material. Think industrial revolution. You have to continue to build, right? This is the messaging over the last 200 years. You have to build. You have to produce. You have to create. You have to be a fucking assembly line as an individual. All of this heaviness. Money. You have to make money. You have to have all these things. The American dream, right? Go get your house where, with a white picket fence. Earn the income. Earn more. Now you, both people have to work. Go, go, make money. Okay. 200 years of that. Practical Earth. Now, in 2020, these Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions are now going to happen in air signs for the next 200 years. Thus, another step in towards the age of Aquarius, because Aquarius is an air sign. So while I can't predict the future, uh, when Jupiter and Saturn met up in Aquarius, it's almost like we have this Jupiter expanded Saturn responsibility to innovate. We have this expanded responsibility to be a part of a community, to relate to others, to come up with new ideas. So instead of having this responsibility to create earthly things, now we have this responsibility to think differently, to, to invent, to explore, to ponder in the mind, right? Think about your future and think about the future of the community that you are a part of. That's specifically Aquarius, but it's going to meet Jupiter and Saturn are going to continue to meet up in air for 200 years. Air is about relations. It's relating to other people. Air is about our mind and how we process and how we speak, how we communicate. So the communication in our world is going through a giant change. When that conjunction happened in 2020, I was so, and also the fact that like it started at zero degrees of Aquarius, that's a random occurrence. When these when these conjunctions change elements, it's not always going to start at zero degrees of the next element. Like, that's pretty fucking cool that it was at zero degrees. That's just pointing more towards the prominence. Is that the right word? It's pointing more towards the incredibleness that it's at zero. This is truly like the zero point. This is true infinite potential that we're having this new 200-year cycle that starts at zero degrees of Aquarius. 
So that was Jupiter and Saturn moving into Aquarius, age of Aquarius, lots of Aquarius energy. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. This is great. Holy shit, Pluto is about to enter Aquarius. Pluto is the, the farthest out planet in our solar system. So he moves the slowest out of all the planets. It takes Pluto 250 years-ish to go around the whole zodiac. So he's never been in Aquarius in our lifetime before 2023. Before, like, I wasn't, I didn't know that much about astrology. I was still pretty much an astrology newbie, but I was like, when Pluto is fully in Aquarius, that's when shit's going to be good. That's when life is going to be much easier than it is now. And at that time, put yourself mentally in December of 2020. How much freedom did you have? How much freedom did you honestly have in December of 2020? I felt like I had none. I felt like I could not be myself anywhere that I went because I did not play into the rules of fear. I wanted to live my life and make my choices for me, not to uh, hurt anyone else. I had no intention of hurting anyone else, but there were so many fear-based rules around that time and I felt stifled. So I was feeling this Aquarius, okay, we're all going to work together. We're all going to be able to be ourselves. Aquarius is unique as fuck. And we're all going to be accepted, truly accepted, not just I'm accepting you because you're like me because I'm in this party of tolerance. It's true acceptance. You do you as long as you are not intentionally harming me, we're good. I'm going to let you do you. I'm not going to try to control what you do with your life. So I knew that at 2024... When Pluto fully moves into Aquarius, wow, we're entering the age of Aquarius. So Pluto dipped his toe into Aquarius first in March of 2023. It's been, um, he's been passing back and forth. Pluto is now in his second retrograde phase since he started in Aquarius. So March of 2023, it was Aquarius, back to Capricorn. Again, Aquarius back to Capricorn. He's about to be back in Capricorn next month. In like two weeks, he's going there. Thumbs up. Um, then at the end of November, 2024, he's entering Aquarius. He's just going to be there for 20 years. Pluto is going to be in Aquarius from 2024 to 2044. Pluto is power. Pluto first has to destroy where he's walking through. Um, he's like a tiller. I, t I call Pluto like the astrological tiller. Um, I think that's the right word. It's that lawn equipment that like digs up the earth, but then afterwards you're left with this fertile soil. So you got an aerator. Is it an aerator? I don't know. Whatever one like wrecks havoc on the lawn. <laughs> that's Pluto. Um, but he's giant. He's fucking huge. So Pluto's going to come and like rip up all of these Aquarius concepts and it's going to be hectic. Hectic isn't bad. Chaos isn't bad. Just know that it's coming, right? Okay, the world's going to get nuts. I'm here for it. I don't have to follow it. I don't have to feed into it. It's coming. It's here. <laughs> it's here. Gosh, it's crazy. Shit is crazy. Um, and for, I'm just going to go off on a tangent real quick. I'll get back to the astrology. For a few years, I fed into it. I played into it, right? I, I grew up on one side of the coin. 2020 happened. I was like, I don't feel free. I'm going to flip to the other side of the coin. I've been extreme both ways. Uh, I have a whole video on that if you want to see it. Uh, points of disagreement with the mainstream spiritual community. That is another Jackie in the Raw video if you want to see it. But, uh... I've been ultra liberal. I've been ultra conservative. I've seen it all. <laughs> um, I adopted a lot of uh, anger based conspiracy in 2020. That's where all that came from. And I was like, oh my God, everyone's out to get us. The whole world is <laughs> set up in a way that's controlling us. And while I still believe that, um, why am I talking about this? Oh, why am I talking about this? <laughs> Uh, pause for reflection. Oh, I see it. It's there. It is. I see it and I laugh about it now because I don't let it control me. Just a few um, points that I've seen um, that I think are super interesting right now because Pluto is moving through Aquarius. Pluto is digging up community. 
Pluto is digging up technology. Pluto is digging up science. Just look at it. Just look at it. Why are you afraid to look at it? I want you to zoom in on photos of crowds. Because AI is everywhere. And if you just glance, if you just pass on by, oh my God, look at how cool that rally is. Look at how much support she has. Zoom in, it's not real. Anything that you see on television, like right now, you guys have no idea who I am. I could be AI, you have no idea. This is where our true humanness is coming into play because you have to decipher for yourself. Um, have you guys heard of deep fake technology, right? This is not to scare you. This is just to be aware because it is happening. It is reality. It is happening right in front of your face. Stuff is being created and manipulated and farced in front of you to get you to react a certain way. So you got to look at it. And then once you look at it, you accept it. And then you say, oh, I don't have to play into that. You know, um, deep fake technology is literally computerized people <laughs> looking extremely real. Things can be filmed to look extremely real. Just look at it, guys. Pluto is in Aquarius. Look at it. Knowledge is power. I think the whole shooting was staged. <laughs> I think it was all just fucking fake. Because <laughs> um, it's just to get you to emotionally react. But anyway, uh, things can be, like, people can be actors as well. Don't forget that people are paid to act. All sorts of people. Pluto in Aquarius. Things are getting um, ripped up. And there's power in looking at the darkness. There's power in accepting what is. There's power in just accepting reality. So Pluto moving through Aquarius wants you to look at the shit, sit with the shit, process whatever's coming up because of it, and then maybe look at those feelings and learn how to accept them within yourself. Because the more self-acceptance you feel, the easier it is to accept everyone around you. Thus, Aquarius, community, collaboration. The word, um, that's pretty much all I have to say about the age of Aquarius. That's where it's all going. Um, yeah, the word community um, used to terrify me because I felt that that meant that I just had adopted many more people that I had to do shit for. And I feel like a lot of you guys can resonate with that. Uh, it's taken me a lot to realize that I get to also accept things from my community. Um, it took me, I, I hosted a retreat in March of 2023. That's when um, Pluto first moved into Aquarius, and I called it, can you, is it going to focus? That's a pen that I made from my retreat. It was called the Aquarius Adventures. It was a women's retreat. Aquarius Adventures. And my intention was, you bring your best self, I'm going to bring my best self, and we're going to make this beautiful. That was the first time that I was with a group of women. Okay, Jackie doesn't do women. She <laughs> doesn't really like women. I was with a group of women, there were five of us, and I was like, this is fucking amazing. I'm not trying. I don't feel like any of these people are trying. We're all just kind of being ourselves. And it was the most beautiful few days I've ever had. I, I used to be afraid of community because I felt like that would just mean that I needed to spread myself more thin for more people. If you're a little terrified of community for that reason, just remember that you are amazing and people want to serve you just because you are you and you don't have to try that hard. And it just comes. And the more that you allow and accept, the more easily it comes to you. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. The age of Aquarius will come as soon as you want it to. And I just talked about this earlier on Insight Timer. There's a want in your mind. And there's a want in your heart. They're two different wants. 
that was for someone out there. That was a mind blow moment for someone out there. The want that comes from your mind says, I want this. And if I don't get it, I'm not going to be happy. The want from your mind has expectations. The want from your mind has stipulations. It has to be this way. The only way I'm going to be happy is if I have this type of house with this type of income, with this type of relationship, with this type of dog. That's the want from the mind. The want from the heart is I see really great things for myself. It would be amazing. I'm just going to use my personal life. It would be amazing if this beautiful motorhome found its way to my life. It would be amazing if my business just flourish and I easily made the amount of money that I needed to make to allow myself to call in everything that I wanted in this dream life. It would be amazing if the man that I chose to do this with continues to support me and lift me up worship me. <laughs> it would be amazing if I got to see all of these things. It would be amazing if I got to see just the whole, the whole country. So I'm desiring that from the heart. I'm going with that. And if it doesn't work out, it's because there's something better for me. So I'm going to choose to keep my vision on what I desire because I don't need it. And I know I don't need it. And that's taken a lot of work to get to. I desire it. I really want it. So this age of Aquarius is here if you want it with your heart, if you desire it. So I guess there's, we can use that terminology. A want is I have to have it. A desire is it would be really, really nice. And if it doesn't happen, I know that there's something better on the way. Better, more aligned, whatever. The age of Aquarius is going to be here as soon as you desire it to be. Where your attention goes, energy flows. Aquarius itself is mental. It's speedy. It's air. It's fast. It's here if you want it to be here. And what do I mean by that? If you continue to focus on earthly things, right? We're talking about that Jupiter-Saturn conjunction for 200 years in Earth. If you're still in the old paradigm of got to chase the bag, got to create the home that I want exactly the way I want it, have to structure my life the exact way it needs to be structured. I got to follow this life path of college kids misery. That just came out of my face. That wasn't even <laughs> planned. Uh, if you have this concrete rules, boundaries, has to be this way, earthly, you're going to stay in that age. For as long as it takes you personally to uproot and move into air. You can choose to focus on what the hell is Age of Aquarius? Community. Okay, who's my community? Who do I love spending my time with? How can I engage more in communities of things that I enjoy doing? What else is Aquarius? Collaboration. Okay, collaboration is a two-way street. How can I offer what I have an abundance of to people? And how can I accept gifts from other people? How can I train myself to receive what other people are trying to freely give me? Sometimes it's money. You know what my favorite thing is to call people out on when I see them? It's always on the phone. It's always on the phone. No, I can't take your money. No. No, don't give that to me. No, it's not always on the phone. Sometimes it's in person, you know? You do something for someone and they try to slip you a 20 and you're like, no, no, I can't do that. You think you're being polite. You're literally telling the universe like, no, what that person is offering me is not for me. Um, and that could be because that doesn't come easily to you. So you think it's a strain for it to come from other people. It doesn't mean it's a strain for them. If someone is freely offering you something, you goddamn say thank you. Thank you. More, please. Uh, allowing people to freely give to you is allowing them to freely share their heart with you. And that feels so good. Doesn't that feel so good? Hmm. Anyway, what else is Aquarius? Aquarius is trade and barter. This changed my whole concept of business. And I really enjoy this trade and barter aspect. Um, 
Earth is money, time in exchange for money. Thus, having a job where you clock in and clock out and you make X amount of dollars an hour, and that is structure. Aquarius, trade and barter. You have the option to tap into any of this stuff whenever you want. You have free will. What do I have an abundance of? What do I need? How can I put that out? Right? It doesn't, you don't even have to like figure out the specifics of I'm going to post it on Facebook or I'm going to call my friend and ask for this. If you just put it out to the universe as your heart desire, if you say, hmm, I have a lot of free time and I really like walking so I can walk people's dogs or I can walk with people and talk with them, you know, like whatever. What do you like doing? What do you have an abundance of? And it doesn't, don't think material. What type of emotions do you have an abundance of? What type of skills do you have an abundance of? What type of knowledge do you have an abundance of? Because you know things because of your life experience that other people don't. Put it out. Think, what do I need more of? What am I lacking in my life? Put it out. I need food. I need shelter. I need new clothes. I need guidance. I need emotional support. I need someone to help me make phone calls because I don't like making phone calls. Stop shooting on yourself, first off. The world isn't meant to rest on your shoulders. How can I trade and barter? Throw it out there. All right, universe, this is what I have to offer. This is what I need. Thank you for making it happen. And then just play with it. Um, I acquired an assistant, a literal working assistant, someone who helped me day in and day out, kind of with whatever I needed help with, because I offered coaching because I offered a skill that I have that comes so easily to me. I essentially just had conversations with this person and she helped me schedule all my appointments and she managed my emails and she helped turn a course into a book. Like how fucking cool is that? Trade and barter. I could have stayed in the earthy mindset of I don't have the money to pay someone right now. So I guess I'm shit out of luck, right? Nope, I have this skill. I'm going to offer it out there and I'm going to see who wants to reciprocate, you know? I've done it on multiple occasions. Um, I also had someone who was helping me clip my long form content into short form content in exchange for astrology and tarot. And it was beautiful and it worked because the things that I might in value in myself because they come so easily, to me, astrology is just like a normal day. It doesn't take any effort. I don't feel like I'm trying when I look at someone's chart. I do it out of joy. Same with reading cards. It just comes. It's like, oh, oh, you need an answer to this question? This is what I'm already doing. I have to remind myself constantly that other people find that shit valuable because they don't do it, right? I use the example of baking all the time because my neighbor one time made me something and it was just like, I opened the door to these like homemade cookies or whatever the hell it was and I was so... I don't have time to bake. I don't care to bake. I don't enjoy baking, but eating a goddamn home cooked something is so meaningful to me. There's things that you naturally do in your everyday life that other people appreciate so much. Trade and barter. Tap into it. The age of Aquarius is there for you. This is all over the place. Uh, welcome to Chaotic Jackie. Uh, my life is changing a whole bunch and I am here for it. And I would love to watch this <laughs> in the future and just reflect on who I was at the time. I probably won't because I have a hard time reviewing my own progress as well. But anyway, uh, cool. I hope this helped. Let us know in the comments what you got from this, what your biggest takeaways were. If you think I'm totally batshit crazy because I'm here for that. Uh, the more crazy I am, the happier I am, and I don't care how other people perceive me. And that has been a process, uh, and it's fun, it's freeing, it's amazing. Thumbs up again. I'm not even holding my thumb up. Uh, that was the universe saying, you're on the right track. So, the Age of Aquarius is here as soon as you want it to be. It is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. Everything is what you make it, you know? Whatever is happening, it is reality. It just is. It is what it is. You get to decide how you react to it. So, uh, 
I don't know how to end this. Thanks for watching. If you, if you randomly found this video and you watched the whole thing, hell yeah, uh, this is how I am. I talk astrology on Insight Timer a few times a week. Insight Timer is a free meditation app. I pull oracle cards to talk about what the astrology wants us to be doing. And then I throw them up on my YouTube. So subscribe if you want. Like this if you want. If you want to support me in any way, all the internet algorithm stuff helps me. Look at that. Woo! <laughs> uh, fireworks happen when you like, share, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you would like to financially support me, if that's something that comes easily to you, it's so appreciated on my end. My link tree is right below. I have a whole bunch of ways to donate there. Just whatever you feel like doing. I have an Amazon wish list. It's fun to send people presents. That's it. I'm here for it. I have a lot to give um, and I am ready to receive what I deserve as well. You know, I want to give more to my community and I'm trying to receive more so I can feel like I can give more because it's an exchange. That's my own thing. Overgiving is my own thing and I'm learning to tap into receiving. So that's the message that I'm here to share. So if you feel like you are also overgiving and you're learning how to tap into receiving, that's what you can follow me for. So that's it. Love you. Aquarius. Today is the age of Aquarius. Today is when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars.